What up? So, EMOMs, what are they? Why do we do them? What's the point? Uh, EMOM stands for every minute on the minute. So, you know, you take a weight and you do generally like one to three reps. Um, and then you re-rack. And when that next minute comes up, you don't rest a minute. It's on the minute. So, uh, you know, you, you pick up a weight. You do one rep, two reps, three reps. And you set it back down. That still counts as time. So if it takes you 30 seconds to do that triple, then you've got 30 seconds, you know, to rest. Um, it, it, cluster set. Think cluster set. It, it's kind of a lot like that. Um, what I like about EMOMs is it allows you to artificially create failure or near failure conditions. I don't know if you want to say artificially create. That's probably a weird way to, to word it. But uh, it lets you use less weight. And or less reps, obviously less reps, you're doing EMOMs, uh, to get you near failure. And as a strength athlete, it lets you get more first rep touches, uh, which is hugely beneficial um, in terms of specificity. Specificity being the most important thing uh, to your sport uh, in the sport of powerlifting. Uh, so, you know, if I were going to do squat EMOMs, say, you know, say, say... Or let, let's say bench. I'm, I'm, I'm the bench guy, even though I've squatted 775. But we'll say bench. Um, say a 500-pound bencher. You know, bench a little over 500 pounds. And you can do 405 for one set of 10. Um, however, if, if you EMOM it, uh, there, there's a good chance you're going to get 20. You can do 20 uh, every minute on the minute. Uh, if not, you know, 15. You're going to get more than 10 reps, right? And all of these reps are going to be first touches. Which, again, huge for specificity. Um, and whereas if you're doing a set of 10, you know, it, it's it's 80%. So they're probably a lot of effective reps. But, you know, reps kind of 8, 9, 10, maybe 7, 8, 9, 10, last four reps are going to be sort of near failure type reps. But if you're doing an EMOM and you're getting 15 to 20, you know, not only are you getting more total reps, more total volume, way more first touches, which is huge. Um, but there's a good chance like from reps, you know, 11, 12, maybe even 10 on are going to be kind of that, you know, almost failure. Maybe you could do a set of two, maybe not, but you could definitely do one. So you're going to get more reps near failure, which is going to be, you know, in theory better for hypertrophy. Along with, you know, getting the more first touches, and I keep saying that because powerlifting and, you know, I, that's my background, uh, those first touches are huge. Um, and you don't have to use as much weight to get kind of those effective single reps, if you will, or doubles or triples, whatever you may be doing. You know, if, if you bench 500 pounds um and you want to practice with a heavier set and get kind of that near failure you know you're looking at like 475 ish um and probably doing you know three to five singles with it before you're probably a little gassed um and you know that 70 pounds of extra weight on there that that's more taxing on the joints etc uh, you take some weight down and you do more total reps. It's not quite as hard on you. Uh, it's easier to recover from like light, lighter weights and more volume always, you know, typically anyway, easier to recover from than sort of the, the heavier stuff that's really taxing on you, really beats you down. Um, so it, it, it's great for that. Again, uh, it, it helps generate hypertrophy for the strength athlete. Uh, if, if you're not really wanting to do whatever, you know, bigger rep sets, which they have their place. Everything has a time and a place. Certainly there, there's a place for those. But if, if you're wanting to get more effective reps, some more growth, um, more first touches, um, you know, this can be used as a conditioning tool as well. Uh, EMOMs kind of can cover all of these bases for you um, and just are absolutely uh, fantastic uh, in terms of doing that. Um, and, and not just EMOMs, but I'm, I'm going to take this a step further and, you know, shortening your rest sets in general. Uh, even if, if you are doing like sets of 8 to 12 or something in that rep range, um, just shortening your rest sets. Saying I'm, I'm only going to take one minute rest instead of taking like five minutes rest uh, is going to force you to use a lighter weight 
um, while still putting you, you know, at or near failure, whatever your goals may be. So e even if you're not, you know, EMOMs are kind of on that extreme end of it, uh, you know, your, your rest sets and making them shorter will allow you to use less weights and less weight, less intensity, uh, and get more overall uh, reps at or near, <laughs> can't talk, at or near failure uh, and, and help facilitate that growth while maybe helping you recover as well. Um, so, and, and what, what also time, like if you're short on time, you just need to get in, get after it, get something done in a hurry and, and not be a waste of a workout. Like EMOMs are fucking great for that too. Or, you know, just limiting, highly limiting your rest, to like one minute you can, you know, load up a compound movement you could even, you know, superset it with something else if you want as well. Um, but, but just really limiting these rest sets. Uh, that's something all my clients uh, get uh, rest times programmed in their programming. Uh, it's even to the point where if I accidentally forget, I'm not infallible, I'm a human. Uh, my clients will typically ask me, hey, you know, what's the rest times for this movement? You didn't put it down. So, yeah, EMOMs, timing your rest sets. Uh can be a tool to help you get closer to hypertrophy, to help you get more first touches in, help you get more effective reps, um, use less weight, help you with a recovery, whole myriad of, of reasons. Uh, but yeah, give it a shot. Peace.